welcome back. So, yesterday we were discussing uh, about similarity <coughs> matrix and uh, let me begin with the advantage of this uh, similarity matrix. So, uh, this is our <coughs> so A is so introduced notation yesterday. So, this is an n by n real matrix. Okay. We call A is similar to B. So, suppose uh, there exists non singular C belonging to M and R such that C inverse A C equal to B. Okay. So, this is we say that A and B are similar. So, we are aiming <coughs> at finding a suitable C such that this B is either diagonal or in the worst scenario an upper triangular matrix. We will come to this little later <coughs> and we also saw that. So, this implies C inverse E A C is equal to E to the B. Okay, so, the exponentials of A and B are also similar. In the context of O D, so let us consider this x dot equal to a x suppose this is the given system and we know that the general solution is given by a to the t a and x naught. x naught is an arbitrary vector in R n and now through similarity transformation we transfer this given system into y dot equal to b y and similarly y is t is given by e to the t b some y naught. Okay. And when b is this simple either diagonal or upper triangular this is very easily computed. Not only that we can easily analyze the qualitative behavior of this y t and how x and y are connected it is very easy. So, you just you put y is equal to c inverse x and so this y naught will be just c inverse x naught and once we know y. So, it is easily <coughs> uh, we can also analyze x since x is c y. Okay. So, that is the advantage. Okay. So, that is why this uh, all effort is being done to find a suitable non singular c such that the c inverse is equal to b and b is quite simple one. So, that we can compute the exponential of t b very easily and then we analyze the solutions of this reduced system and then we uh, get information about the original system. Okay, that is the advantage. Okay. So, let us now begin with uh, this thing. So, before going to that thing, so just let me again uh, make a few remarks. So, <coughs> so by the definition of the norm it follows that norm of A x is less than or equal to norm A norm x for all x in R n. Okay. We also saw that <coughs> also we saw this A is less than or equal to this Frobenius norm. 
okay so this is provenius and from this if i replace x by x minus y and by linearity of a so we have a x minus a y less than or equal to norm e x minus y and that proves this function x going to x a x is Lipschitz continuous more is true. So, suppose suppose a t is a mat <coughs> matrix valued function of t in some interval. So, that means, for each t in a b a t is in m n r okay. and suppose and assume the elements of a t are continuous on a b okay. and then <coughs> then this for each t I have this thing and since this Frobenius norm is sum of all <coughs> squares of the elements of a t and since I am assuming they are all continuous. So, this is just a sum uh, let me put m for all t in a b using continuity of the elements of a t. Okay. So, this implies so we have this useful inequality see less than equal to m x minus y for all t in a b. So, that means, this <coughs> matrix the uh, x going to a t x is uniformly Lipschitz in this interval and this is we use this we use this fact in studying the linear system x dot equal to a t x and because of this global existence the solutions exist in any interval where a t is continuous. Okay. So, with this <coughs> Uh, little remark. So, let us again go back to uh, linear algebra more linear algebra. As I said yesterday this is not a course on linear algebra. So, I am just recalling <coughs> uh, certain facts that are used in our study of differential equations. So, suppose m and n are subspaces of R n uh, such that. So, since they are subspaces 0 element is all always there and I just want their intersection to be just 0. We call sub subspaces we call m n disjoint. Okay. So, uh, though the intersection is not empty, but it is the trivial <coughs> subspace namely the 0 subspace we still call it uh, disjoint 
and uh, assume R n is m plus n. Okay. Let me explain that little bit. So, this is called direct sum of m n. Okay. This means uh, <coughs> each vector in R n is written uh, as a sum of a vector in m and a vector in n. Okay. And this condition m n are disjoint. Okay. So, you can easily check that r n is equal to m plus n m direct sum m if and only if for all x in R n there exists unique y in m and z in n such that x equal to y plus z. Okay, that should happen. And this is easily extendable <coughs> to any finite number of subspaces and that is what we are going to do. Okay. So, in addition suppose m n r invariant under A. So, remember A is given matrix n by n matrix. So, that is again definition A m. So, you act A on every element of m and again that should be in n and similarly for n. Okay. So, this means this means you act A on every element of m and again the result should be again back in m. Okay. In this situation suppose we choose a basis in uh, m and a basis in n and if you put together that will be a. So, I <coughs> will I will just write okay this and this will form a basis in R n ok. Now, you take those basis elements and form this matrix C ok. So, this is C and these are you put the basis elements of m here and then you put basis elements here okay, and then you act A. So, since these are all basis vectors C is non singular. Okay. And by this assumption that M and N are uh, invariant under A, you can easily check that this C is just A 1. Okay, so, this this sub matrix, so this is uh, corresponds to m and this corresponds to n. Because if I act A on this basis elements which are in m and their result is again they are back in m. So, each action 
is again a linear combination of vectors of these things and that is expressed like that. So, in other words, so if you have two subspaces invariant and rm and whose direct sum is r m, then the matrix with respect to that basis decomposes into a block matrix. So, in other words, what we have is C inverse A C is A 1 0 0 A 2 and this is easily extendable to may finitely many subspaces. So, let me just state that thing. So, let m 1 m k be subspaces of R n such that each m j is invariant under A that is one condition and then I have m j intersection m l is just 0 j different from l. So, they are mutually disjoint and the third condition. So, R n is direct sum of m k with these conditions then there exist non singular c such that c inverse a c is a 1 a k. So, in other words in such a situation we can uh, find a similar <coughs> matrix which is a block diagonal matrix uh, satisfying this condition. Okay. So, this is important. <coughs> okay. In this case immediately we see that C inverse E A C is E A 1 etcetera E A k. This we saw yesterday. Okay. Once the matrix is block diagonal, its exponential is very easily computed and now <coughs> we uh, proceed to find some special subspaces of R n which are related to A and which satisfy this hypothesis of this thing. So, that we have a similar <coughs> block matrix uh, which is similar to A. Okay. So, that is our <coughs> next term. Okay. Okay. That's <coughs> so, yesterday I introduced the concept of spectrum of A. So, this is just spectrum of A. So, denoted by S p of A. So, this is set of all eigenvalues of A. Okay. Uh, <coughs> though A is a real matrix, an eigenvalue of A could be real complex. Okay. So, let us <coughs> split this into two parts. So, let us <coughs> lambda 1, lambda r. So, these are real <coughs> uh, eigenvalues counted with multiplicity okay. and then this we have mu 1 mu s so these are non real and since the characteristic polynomial has real coefficients we also have this mu 1 bar mu s bar also eigenvalues of a okay so these are also non so they always occur in pair 
Okay. So, the total number because we are counting multiplicity. So, therefore, we have r plus 2 s is equal to n. So, this is the order of the a. And this is also the degree of the characteristic polar characteristic polynomial, right? Okay. So now, just pick. <coughs> uh, okay. So let lambda belongs to spectrum of A. also real. Okay. So, complex case is similar. Okay. So, let k be the algebraic multiplicity of lambda. Okay. So, this is the multiplicity of lambda as a uh, root of the characteristic polar. Hmm? That is ok. So, there is another notion <coughs> called geometric multiplicity. So, for that we have to introduce a subspace. So, let a n 1 be kernel of a minus lambda i. Okay. So, <coughs> this is the null space of null space or kernel. of this a minus lambda i. Okay. <coughs> so, this is referred as Eigen space of a corresponding to lambda. So, if lambda is an Eigen value we just form this and this is a subspace of. So, n 1 is a subspace of R n. So, in case of uh, complex Eigen value, we take the real and imaginary parts of the Eigen vector and still we get a subspace of R n that is important hmm? that we keep in mind. So, the dimension as a subspace it has a dimension of n 1 is called the geometric multiplicity of lambda. <coughs> so, let me just state a fact that <coughs> geometric multiplicity is always less than or equal to algebraic multiplicity and the difference is referred to as the difference <coughs> is referred to as deficiency of uh, lambda for any lambda. Okay, so, that is that is always true, lambda in spectrum. So, the good case is when geometric multiplicity is algebraic equal to algebraic multiplicity, then we will have sufficient number of uh, Eigen vectors spanning this subspace n 1 and uh, a difficult part is when this is strict inequality. Okay. So, <coughs> so, in that case what we do is, so <coughs> Now, define in general. So, define a 
एन जे कर्नल ऑफ ए माइनस लैमडा आई टू दी पावर जे ओके सो यू डू इट जे इक्वल टू वन टू एक्सेट्रा ओके सो एन वन इज दिन स्पेस दैट वी हैव डिफाइन एंड वी हैव दिस जे ओके इट्स वेरी इजीली चेक दैट दिस इज असेंडिंग चेन ऑफ सब स्पेसिस एंड सिंस वी आर इन ए फाइनाइट डिमेंशन दिस चेन के नॉट कंटिन्यू फॉर लॉन्ग सो देर एग्जिस्ट सो देर एग्जिस्ट स्मॉलेस्ट डी बिगर दैन इक्वल टू वन सच दैट एन वन एन टू एन डी आफ्टर हुई दे आर ऑल इक्वल सो देर आर नो मोर एडिशंस ऑफ न्यू नॉन जीरो वैक्टर्स ओके सो दिस इज स्मॉलेस्ट ओके इट हैज ए नेम एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड इंडेक्स ऑफ लैमडा सो एवरी थिंग इज वी हैव फिक्स एन रियल आइगन वैल्यू लैमडा एंड वी आर जस्ट डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दैट so it again one more fact so these are all subspaces okay uh, this n1 n2 nd are invariant under a okay so let me not stress that again and again so that's <coughs> invariant subspaces of rn and more importantly and dimension of nd is equal to algebraic multiplicity so when geometric multiplicity of an eigen value is strictly less than the algebraic multiplicity we have to go for some more linearly independent vectors in order to get the full dimension namely its algebraic multiplicity we want to reach uh, the algebraic multiplicity and this is the way one reaches that thing okay so you know you do this for every <coughs> uh, so if okay so let mu uh, be a non real eigen value eigen value okay and again you form the same thing okay there is there is this one there is no problem kernel of a minus mu i j j equal to 1 to n and it will have some index now you just <coughs> consider the real and imaginary parts parts of vectors in these entities that's all you have to do because remember we want to find only <coughs> a uh, basis for rn okay so we want only the uh, real vectors and when there are complex eigen vectors you take the real and imaginary part they are not eigen vectors but they are linearly independent as we saw yesterday and that will do our job okay so in this way uh, okay so let me now just uh, uh, put this together so for <coughs> each lambda in the spectrum of a real or non real it doesn't matter we thus form invariant uh, 
uh, subspace. So, let me call it uh, n lambda of R n that is important. Okay, this subspace is in R n uh, such that dimension of n lambda is algebraic multiplicity of lambda if lambda is real otherwise it is two times algebraic multiplicity if lambda is non real because that count has to be proper okay because when lambda is non real lambda bar is also an eigen value so the, it has to be counted twice so that's why this uh, twice <coughs> and they are all invariant under a and by very choice so we also have that n lambda intersection n mu is just 0 if lambda is that is by very construction you see that. Okay. So, therefore, so R n is written as so let me just write lambda 1 lambda r. So, this corresponds to uh, <coughs> real Eigen values and then I have n mu 1 this n mu s. Okay. So, I am not writing the mu 1 bar mu s bar because they are already included right here. So, this corresponds to real Eigen values. and this correspond to non real Eigen values. Okay. And the, <coughs> the these uh, dimensions perfectly match and that is why the, we have this inequality and uh, now you just you the fact we already stated since all these are invariant, okay, so these subspaces are invariant. So, therefore, there exists a non singular C, C such that C inverse A C is now A 1, A 2, A R. Uh, let me write lambda 1 lambda mu 1 mu s okay. and the next task is to find a suitable basis in each of these uh, subspaces. So, that this block matrices have a very simple structure okay. that is what we are going to do next time uh, <coughs> next to it. So, instead of doing for a general thing, so let me just uh, illustrate by a case how to do that illustrate this by a case. So, how to choose a specific basis in E n t. Okay. So, <coughs> so, suppose lambda is a real Eigen value of algebraic multiplicity 4 
and geometric multiplicity. So, I have n 1, n 2, n 3 say okay, and this uh, dimension is 2, dimension is 3 and this dimension is 4. Okay. Suppose, I have this situation. Okay. There are other possibilities. So, let us take one such possibility <coughs> and now I would like to construct a basis uh, where uh, A is simplified to an upper triangular matrix. Okay. So, choose x in n 3 such that x is not in n 2. This is possible because this dimension is 3 and this is dimension 4. So, there is at least one uh, <coughs> non zero vector which is in n 3 which is not in n 2 that is fine. Okay. Now, you form this <coughs> Uh, x a minus lambda i x and a minus lambda i square x. Okay. So, this is in n 2 by very definition and this vector is n 1 okay. and these are all non zero in fact these are are linearly independent check check that are linearly independent okay. and now this is a non zero vector in n 1 but dimension of n 1 is 2 so choose so, let me call it uh, u 1, u 1 in n 1 which is linearly independent of. So, let me put some name. So, this uh, let me call this as u 2 and this one u 3 and this one u 4. Okay. If you change the order, the matrix will change. Okay. So, that is that is what we will see now. Okay. And now, you add this u 1 on these vectors u 1, u 2, u 3, u 4. Okay. And u 1 is in n 1, so this is just it becomes lambda u 1 and u 2 is also in n 1, so that becomes just lambda u 2, but this is not in this u 3 is in n 2. So, if you work it out, you would see that lambda u 3 plus u 2 and similarly you get lambda u 4 plus u 3. Okay. So, let me write this the same for u 1, u 2, u 3, u 4 and now I write this matrix lambda 0, 0, 0, 0, lambda, 0, 0, 0, 1, lambda, 0, 0, 0, 1, lambda. So, it is very easy to check. Okay, that is what we get by just writing this thing. Okay, and we see significantly here, there is one block here and another block here. Okay. See, these are referred to as Jordan blocks. 
जोड़ा अपना सो इन जनरल इन जनरल द नंबर ऑफ जोड़ान ब्लॉक्स करेस्पॉन्डिंग टू एन आइगन वैल्यू इज इक्वल टू जोमेट्रिक मल्टीप्लीसिटी of that particular eigen value so in this case we have the geometric multiplicity 2 so we get two blocks okay and if <coughs> if mu is non real so just a plus ib b non zero the jordan blocks are bit complicated because the eigen vectors are uh, complex so you have to take only real part and uh, imaginary part the jordan blocks corresponding to mu r of the form so remember they always appear in pairs so here also we get 2 by 2 blocks okay so let me write just b2 i zero b2 i i2 let me write here etc so just okay so diagonal blocks so b2 is 2 by 2 matrix this a b minus b a and i2 is just 1 0 0 the identity 2 by 2 matrix so here in case of real thing we have just scalars on the diagonal but in the complex case we have this 2 by 2 blocks okay so this is the only difference okay so let me summarize uh, <coughs> in detail now so this so summarize so given a matrix m n r there exists a non singular c such that c inverse a c so let me just write j1 j2 jk where each jl is a jordan block corresponding to an eigen value of a okay and we have so if <coughs> if uh, if the eigen value is real then jl will be very simple lambda 1 1 and each uh, jl might contain several blocks okay so one of the i'm just this is not the only possibility there will be several blocks and uh, and if the eigen value is non real then this will be just b2 b2 i2 that's the only difference 
Okay. So, in particular, in particular. So, we have this C inverse A C uh, not C inverse A C exponential e to the j 1 etcetera. Okay. And in the next 10 minutes, I will just show you how it easy it is to compute the exponential of each of these blocks. Okay. So, let me just again concentrate on that. So, let lambda be real and j is equal to. So, I take one of the blocks. So, this is a square matrix of some order. So, so what is E j? Okay, so that's the next question. <coughs> so again, a fact. So let me just. So if A and B commute, that is A B equal to B A then exponential of a plus b is equal to exponential of a exponential of b. So, just like exponential of a real number okay. and in general if we have non commutativity then we may not have equality in this e to the a plus b may be different from e to the a and e to the b. So, since addition is uh, commutative we also have this okay. and this easily follows from this binomial theorem just like again real numbers. So, if a b equal to b a then a plus b to the k is summation uh, k j a j b k minus j j equal to 0. So, this you can easily prove by induction and which in turn give this. Okay. So, that is the only thing involved. So, now we apply this to j. Okay. So, re rewrite j as lambda i plus b. So, b is this matrix 1 1 1 1. So, everywhere 0 except the super diagonal which is just all ones and since this is identity. So, these two matrices commute. So, we have this e to the j is equal to e to the lambda i e to the p and this you can easily check e to the lambda i is nothing but e to the lambda into i into e to the b. So, this is identity. So, we have just e to the lambda e to the b. And now, let me just explain this. So, this is by definition i plus b plus s. Okay. The important thing about b is b is a nil potent matrix, b is a nil potent. that is 
there exists some r <coughs> integer r such that b r is 0. Okay. So, this is a finite sum. So, it only goes up to b r minus 1 by r minus 1 factorial and it is very easy to compute even the powers. So, this uh, the diagonal containing ones will be just shifted above and above. So, it is very easy to compute. So, and we have this thing. Okay. And in case uh, lambda is non real, so, so mu suppose mu is non real, then we have this j as block i 2 i 2 etcetera till we can use. So, this will write it as this b 2 b 2 plus again same thing 0 i 2 0 uh, 0 i 0 i 2 etcetera. So, again this is nil potent, nil potent and these two commute. Okay. So, it is very easy to find therefore, e to the j is again e to the b 2 b 2 into i plus. So, let me call this matrix as some uh, d. So, I have d plus d square etcetera. So, this is finite sum. So, there is no problem about that finite sum and I leave as an exercise. So, remember b 2 is a minus b b a okay, just 2 by 2 matrix. So, it is very easy to compute that. So, compute uh, e to the b 2 is equal to e to the a minus uh, <coughs> okay, let me just write that e to the a uh, cos b minus sin b sin b cos b. Okay. So, it is not difficult to uh, compute that. Okay. So, finally, let me just take this theorem. So, you just combine all these things. So, suppose uh, spectrum of A is a subset of lambda in C such that real lambda is strictly less than 0. Okay. So, then there exist constants k positive and sigma positive such that the matrix norm of e to the t a is less than or equal to k e to the minus sigma t for all t. So, this is important, this is not valid for all t, only for t negative and just <coughs> you have to use is you have this Jordan form. j 1 j 2 j k. So, therefore, you have e to the t a is less than or equal to norm of c inverse norm of c 
and then you have norm of this matrix e to the t j 1 e to the t j k and this is just a constant you leave it and this we have already seen that this is less than or equal to maximum of e to the t j l because this all block diagonal and now if you use the <coughs> previous representation you see that sigma can be taken as minus half uh, maximum of minus real lambda, lambda in the spectrum. Okay. Okay. So, this is an exercise you can just find that this is can be estimated less than or equal to e to the uh, minus sigma t some constant I okay. will put another constant here constants will come. Okay, so, so there will be some polynomials here, polynomials in T coming from this term and that will be uh, killed by half of this another half. So, that is how you get only half, any fraction will do. Okay. So, with that we conclude this uh, preliminaries on linear algebra. Uh, you can work out several things in the some good text on linear algebra and fill the details uh, that are left out in these two hours. Thank you.